and subsequent. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Department of Biotechnology had announced a data-driven research to eradicate TB, the Dare to Erad TB program on the World TB. We know that linozolid works, right? It works in the test tube, it works in macrophages, it works in humans, right? There's a lot of data. The question is, how do you generate data in a preclinical model which will show you that I'm able to get a handle on tolerability? And that tolerability translates into humans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So again, it's, it's, a, it's a clinician's question. Yes. I've never seen a patient, so maybe it will be a good idea for clinicians to pitch in here. So if I can add in what Sheetal was yes, saying, yes. Uh, you know, that uh, with the host directed, uh, you know, if you can reduce, because, you know, it's it's the extended treatment duration, which is, which, you know, kind of confounds the effect of, you know, the neuropathy or what you're saying. So if you are able to reduce, uh, you know, the duration of treatment, uh, that will have impact on that. So in that sense, uh, you know, host directed therapy uh, will give an answer of, you know, taking care of these unwanted, undesired effects that these regimens will have, right? And that is something which can be tried in animal models uh, because you're not looking at those undesired effects. It's just looking for shortening of the duration. So, you know, uh, in, in, a, in, in a very indirect way, you are, you know, kind of trying to control the damages which is caused, uh, you know, the, the parallel damage that other, you know, uh, side effects that can have with these drugs. Sure. I mean, funding agencies should uh, realize that it, you know, testing out something new that will shorten so will actually. Oh, it's being discussed it, at DVT it, it is forum. still a novel question, yes. you know. It's being discussed at DVT still forum. Still so it's still that, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks both Thiraj and Vasan for your talks. Thank you. Um, any more questions from the audience? So, uh, so I have a couple of questions um, to Dr. Deeraj. So now that uh, uh, we are recommending a preventive treatment you know, for household contacts uh, who are exposed to active TB, so what is your comment on using host-directed therapy as uh, for TB preventive therapy to prevent infection as well as averting disease development in uh, like latently infected individuals? Oh, I, I think uh, there is there is no evidence as of now on uh, you know on this angle. And if if you uh, remember the, the one slide which I talked about, uh, a simple surveillance of you know misuse of or use of NSAIDs and look for TB incidents uh, that can give you some baseline data that whether there is a possibility of using host directed approaches for such latent infection or not, or you know. Uh, a prophylactic for people who are going to be exposed to TB because they are, you know, household contacts. So uh, I don't think host directed therapy. There is evidence as of now, experimental evidence to look for preventive uh, aspects. You know, so that is something which is not there. But that's a, a very interesting suggestion. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, there are some studies where in a different context this has been looked at, uh, where you know uh, you look to boost. Uh, BCG uh, vaccine induced uh, immunity by, you know, uh, providing some prophylactic treatments. So uh, it falls into similar realms to what the question you asked, but not exactly, you know, uh, used as most directed therapy, rather it is enhancing the immunity or immune responses. Sure. Th thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deerich. And this another point which you touched upon in your presentation is um, like this host directed therapy is very promising when it comes to like in vitro culture. Uh, but we get less promising effects, no, uh, when it comes to clinical trials due to the all the factors which you also explained regarding the heterogeneity of host factors, etc. So, what what are your comments as an expert in the field for future clinical trials uh, using host director ta uh, drug targets? No, I I think uh, I, I didn't really mean that uh, host directed therapy or approaches are not working in uh, clinical trials. They are working, uh, you know. But I think uh, there are some issues which are preventing them from going to the next stage. And I'm not really aware of what, because I know uh, trials with metformin is going well, uh, giving interesting results. 
uh, you know, trial with statin, uh, the result hasn't really come out, or I think one trial has result has come out, one has not come out. So, so there are, uh, you know, uh, promising results coming out from clinical trials. Animal models, there is hundreds of studies uh, and show a very promising result in terms of uh, both enhancing efficacy of a standard anti-TB drugs uh, and also a potential to reduce uh, duration of treatment. Uh, so, you know, uh, I mean, these are there. I think we need a very concerted effort towards host directed therapy because so far it hasn't really got the kind of traction uh, from funders or medical organizations uh, to, you know, uh, you know, to kind of give it a push, you know, so that it goes to the next level. And that's why I try to emphasize on some of the drugs which are already in clinic for, you know, for other conditions uh, should be easily, uh, you know, uh, with some relaxed criteria allowed to quickly test it in population. Uh, because we know that long term usage of some of those drugs may not be deleterious. So, and see what happens, uh, you know, in these cases. It's difficult to, uh, you know, convince the, the medical organization to get approval. But yes, I think if uh, there is a, a push uh, from the leadership, uh, we may have a situation where uh, you can have much, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, higher pressure to develop these uh, host directed approaches and, you know, develop the protocols for clinical trials. That's what uh, is, I think, at this stage. Uh, and, you know, another important point is that uh, if you if you uh, somehow fast track these clinical trials, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you're, you're, you are expecting a, a result, something which is within a year or so, or within one and a half to two years, a timeline which coincides with 2025 limit, even if we come up with some regime uh, with host directed or even, uh, you know, other drugs uh, within this time frame, that will be excellent uh, achievement for, for the scientific community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Deeraj. And one last I mean, just add on, sorry, if I may add on to a, a few yes, points here. Yeah. Right? One is we're looking at three different buckets. One is the funding, right? So we have Raj sitting here from a, uh, from a, a funding organization perspective. Then comes the research and development where you know, most of us are representing here, can take care of that. The third piece is a regulatory piece, right? We really need to engage regulators in terms of understanding what kind of evidence or data package will they like to see to give approval for any of these complicated studies? Because, you know, uh, it, all these things look great on paper, great in in vitro and in, 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 in mouse model. But when it really comes to doing it in the real world, you have a lot of masking to call uh, variables. One is the incidence of the disease, the kind of bug that's there is a drug susceptible, drug resistant, right? And also availability of drugs. There are multiple variables. So again, we really need to be very careful in choosing a different kind of geographies where this kind of studies will be done. And what are the pre-agreed endpoints in terms of seeking approval to show that there is actually a benefit to the patient at the end. So this requires a very thorough discussion and also engaging with regulators in terms of what is that they would like to see. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Vasan. So any more questions? We are already at the end of an hour. Hi, uh, Dr. Sain, yes. can I just say a few words? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, so, you know, I, I completely agree, actually, both uh, with Vasan, what you said, actually, I think we obviously need to bring regulators in the discussion forum as well. Uh, I think we'll try to do that as well from our side. That's the whole idea of bringing community together, actually, because until unless they were ready to test in the normal, uh, in the in the real world conditions, everything becomes only a kind of, but I think that's the way to move ahead. And that is why I think the challenge is really to be able to come up with very, very promising approach. And I think design of clinical studies are also going to be very, very critical actually in many of these, because for example, is the host directed therapy required throughout the infection cycle? Or, you know, is it sufficient for the early or the middle phase when you have a different kind of immune responses and other activities going on? So me, it's interesting and important to, for us to discuss. And, you know, the whole idea is that, that, uh, you know, as with regard to funding, I mean, please feel free to send a one page concept notes to uh, to the DBT actually, and we'll be more than happy to look at it actually. Clearly governments has a very, very important mandate uh, as you all know, 
and obviously dbt is committed for it actually so we will be very very happy to talk to all of you and you know discuss your pro one pages and any good ideas obviously the shorter the idea the better it would sell uh, difficult in the tv world but i think it's always achievable something has to be achieved in a shorter period of time so thank you again thank you for the awesome thank you rajesh one more one more missing piece is the nutrition right nutrition and tv we have a lot of information and data in terms of what nutrition can do to skew uh, the immune responses. So that's one more point to consider in terms of how can nutrition impact any of this uh, proposed uh, host mediated uh, modulator. Well, I think as you right, I mean, you rightly said, you know, there are various themes that have come out today actually as well. I mean, in fact, we can discuss each thematic on a session day each day actually and come up with ideas. So you are obviously, I mean, clearly that's what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sain, over to you. Okay, sir. So, um, hearing um, there are no further questions in the chat box. So, I think uh, we are coming to the conclusion of the of today's session. So, once again, our sincere thanks to the speakers uh, for the wonderful uh, presentation and uh, our thanks to the audience, each and every one of the audience here who have made this session possible. So, um, so we know that the biology of uh, MTB is uh, it's still incomplete, and the clinical tuberculosis is very complex. Um, so, any uh, so th uh, there are multiple subpopulations of bacteria. There are differences in the respiratory rate, their metabolic states. Uh, where do they exist in the human body? So, all of them are challenges across. But we believe that combining the lessons learned from the research. Uh, emerging technologies, evolving understanding of the MTB biology will definitely uh, bring us to a safer and novel regimen very soon. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank Singh. Bye-bye. Thank you. On behalf, on behalf of the Department of Biotechnology, I thank Dr. Vasan and Dr. Dheeraj for the, the wonderful talks. I also request all the participants to kindly join us for the next webinar in this series. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vashneya. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. Bye. Thanks.